Okay, I call the 2,379th meeting of the Milwaukee City Council to order. This meeting is being held in person at City Hall and by video conference. The public may participate in this meeting by coming to City Hall or joining the Zoom webinar. The meeting is being broadcast live on the city's YouTube channel and Comcast cable channel 30 in city limits. There will be opportunities for the public to speak during this meeting. If you would like to address council, you may come to City Hall. If you are interested, and there will also be opportunity to comment via Zoom. If you are interested in speaking, please let staff know by filling out a yellow comment card for those at City Hall or emailing OCR at MilwaukeeOregon.gov for those on Zoom. When it is time to take public comment, staff will monitor the comment cards, email inbox, and Zoom participant list and, ch and chat. We will take comments in the order they are received and seen. Written comments may be emailed to OCR at MilwaukeeOregon.gov. Spanish translation services are available upon request. The public is asked to request translation and other meeting accessibility services at least 48 hours before the meeting. Contamos Contamos con servicio de traducción al español cuando sea solicitado. Se pide, se pide al público que solicite servicios de traducción y otros servicios de accesibilidad para reuniones por lo menos 48 horas antes de la reunión. Translation services are also available in other languages. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The city of Milwaukee respectfully acknowledges that our community is located on the ancestral homeland of the Clackamas people. In 1855, the surviving members of the Clackamas signed the Willamette Valley Treaty, also known as the Kalapuya Etc. Treaty, with the federal government in good faith. We offer our respect and gratitude to the indigenous people of this land. And now some announcements. The city is organizing an Earth Day volunteer restoration event at the Willow Place Natural Area this Saturday, April 22nd, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Volunteers are asked to register on the city website and you've got the link there. I would just also note there are a few other uh, Earth Day events, including uh, one led by the historic Milwaukee NDA here in downtown working on uh, Main Street and specifically planting pollinator gardens along Main Street. And uh, the Hector Campbell NDA is doing an adopt a road cleanup. Um, on Saturday as well. And on Sunday, there's a work party out at Elk Rock Island. So there are lots of opportunities to engage for Earth Day this weekend. The Milwaukee Police Department, in partnership with the DEA and CERT, is hosting a prescription drug drop-off and document shredding day on Saturday, April 22nd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Public Safety Building parking lot. The event includes the collection of unused or expired prescription drugs and a truck will be on hand to shred sensitive documents. Please arrive with all items in a box or bag and remove staples. City Manager Ann Ober hosts another open door session on Friday, April 28th from 9 to 10 a.m. Stop by to ask questions, raise concerns, or just find out what the city is currently doing. The session takes place here in the City Hall Council Chambers. Please save the date for the 20th annual Friends of the Letting Library plant sale on May 13th, 14th, and 20th. The sale takes place at Milwaukee Floral and Garden on Lake Road. If you are interested in volunteering at the sale or would like to donate plants, please reach out to the Friends at the email listed here. For more information about each of these events and others, please visit the city's homepage at milwaukeeoregon.gov or call 503-786-7555. Does anybody have anything else they wanted to give by way of announcements? Just to tag along for the uh, Friends of the Library plant sale, that, that email, which was not listed here, 
uh, is lettingfriends.plantsale at gmail.com. And we are, we really do need uh, more plant uh, uh, donations, cuttings, and that kind of thing. Oh, okay. Good. Good to know. I have some in my yard if somebody wants to come dig them. That's <laughs> um, Okay, so... We have a number of proclamations today and awards, and the first one is uh, this announcement of our Volunteer of the Year for 2022. So uh, Jason Wax, the Community Engagement Coordinator, and our volunteer, Elizabeth Stark, are here. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. So, hi, I'm Jason Wax, the Community Engagement Coordinator of the City. I'm um, here tonight and follow up to last month's meeting when I was here to choose the volunteer of the winner, uh, volunteer of the year. Um, but first, I want to just go over uh, the criteria and kind of make sure that folks at home and anybody watching knows kind of what we do. So we, every year for quite a few years now, um, ask City Council to choose a volunteer of the year. Um, the criteria for choosing the winner is anyone who resides in Milwaukee or is a member of a nonprofit organization or business that serves the community here in Milwaukee. Uh, we look at longevity, longevity of service to the community. Um, council considers um, contributions made in 2022, um, service within the city limits of Milwaukee, and then also uh, some contribution of uh, volunteer efforts related to so a board or commission or community. It's not necessarily required, but it's definitely something that you look at. Um, this year's nomination process began on November 28th, 2022, and ended on February 15th, 2023. And um, during that time, we received 13 nominations. Um, and, and I just wanted to make sure that we acknowledged uh, each one of those. And Mayor, if you'd like to read off uh, kind of all the folks oh. that were nominated. Sure. That would be great. I'm happy to do that. The 2022 Volunteer of the Year nominees included Jamie Berry, Charles Bird, Roy Burge, Terry Geyer Brindell, Greg Hemer, Heather Hobson, Stephanie Hollingshead, Susanna Pye, Virginia Pye, Wilda Parks, Elizabeth Start, and Samantha Swindler. And I think I speak for all of us that it's always a hard thing to just pick one, but we have a very worthy one that we picked this year. Absolutely. Um, and after that, um, if you'd like to announce the winner of the 2022 oh. Volunteer of the Year. Oh, I think that that cat's out of the bag, but okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> you were supposed to keep Liz, Liz back outside the room or something. I wasn't sure how best to do that, so we just came up together. And now I am proud to report that the 2022 Volunteer of the Year is Elizabeth Start. Um, and here are some of the things Elizabeth has accomplished. And you're going to run. Oh, you've got it. Okay. Elizabeth has been volunteering with the city since 2016. I think she's been volunteering for longer than that, actually. She first served on the city's comprehensive plan advisory committee, which helped shape the plan that will guide growth and development in the city for the next 20 years. She is currently a member of the city's equity steering committee, which began meeting in January 2022. Elizabeth's involvement in the committee was invaluable as it developed a mission, vision, and goals. Elizabeth has been involved in the Linwood Neighborhood District Association for many years, becoming vice chair in 2021 and chair in May of 2022. In that role, she coordinates the monthly meetings, leads Adopt the Road volunteer events, helps plan the neighborhood's annual block party, and much more. And I will say that block party was really fun last year. That's, that was a great event. Elizabeth's volunteerism doesn't stop at Milwaukee's border. Here's a list of some of the amazing work that she does in addition to her volunteerism for the city. She has shared her expertise with the community on reducing, reusing, and recycling as a master recycler since 2014. She is a member of the Oregon Recycling Advisory Council representing small businesses. She's a, mem she's a board member of the Women's Foundation of Oregon, an organization that tackles some of the most challenging issues faced by women, girls, and gender expansive people today. 
And lastly, she volunteers with Redeploy, an organization that helps veterans with reuse and repair. Cool. So thank you so much, Liz, for everything you do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I met her a long time ago doing her recycling work at the farmer's market, which we're going to talk about the farmer's market in a bit. But um, yeah, thanks for everything you do in town. And um, I don't know if uh, we want to let Liz talk or the counselors want to <laughs> thank her. But anyway. Well, thank you, Honorable Mayor and Honorable City Councilors and Anne and everyone, um, and Jason, for this honor. Jason gets tired of my emails, I'm sure. <laughs> um, I wanted to share a little bit. You know, I um, lived in 18 different places before I hit high school. My family was very food and um, housing insecure throughout most of my uh, childhood. And so um, I always idealized this American culture and, like, you know, finding a place that I could really call home. And when we came to Milwaukee in 2013, 11, I knew we found this place. And so having the honor of being part of this community and getting to volunteer and really be engaged civically is just such a pleasure. And really, you know, looking at my childhood of that sense of belonging and sense of place, um, I'm really grateful to have a community like this where I can have an opportunity to be involved and get to do all of these things and really get to meet other folks in the community. So I'm really grateful for this opportunity and for this um, honor and award. Um, I also want to, you know, thank all the other volunteers who were nominated and all the other volunteers where, you know, their work really goes unseen. I have two people I'd like to especially call out, um, Pam, Pam Denham and um, Terry Greyer Brindell. Um, they do so much work with just keeping Milwaukee green and I just show up and help where I can and just because I'm the loudest person in the group usually they're like oh this is doing all this stuff but it's those ladies and so I really want to lift them up as well and again thank you so much for this honor. Thank you. Well, thank you, Liz, and we will have a event in the summer where we'll get to, you know, all personally thank you too. But did anybody want to chime in with anything? Okay. I have a brief a Oh, brief he's, he's, for pre you. he's yeah. typed one up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am professional. Uh, I'd like to express our sincere gratitude and heartfelt thanks for your outstanding service and dedication to our city. Your tireless efforts and selfless commitment have made a tremendous difference in the lives of so many people. Your hard work, passion, and generosity have touched the lives of countless individuals, families, and organizations in our city. Your contributions have not only made our community a better place to live, but have also inspired others to get involved and make a positive impact. We recognize that you you, the work you do as a volunteer is often behind the scenes and goes unrecognized. But please know that your efforts have not gone unnoticed. Uh, you are a shining example of what it means to be a dedicated and compassionate volunteer. And we are so proud to have you as a member of our community. Thank you again for all that you do. Your commitment and service to our city are truly appreciated and valued. Thank you. When, I, when I'm feeling down, I'm going to have to go <laughs> save it to your phone. Um, I don't have a prepared statement, but I do want to just say that um, sometimes when you meet people, um, you never realize how well you're going to connect with them. And the very first time that Liz and I had a conversation, it lasted would you say three, four hours? So oh, four hours. Yeah. <laughs> and and I don't think we were ready to quit. I think it was just the beginning of a conversation that will last years and years. And um, I, I think of um, some of the most um, effective volunteers that I've known in my life. And those have been people who make volunteering so um, approachable and make it feel feel like you belong. And that's definitely something that you bring into the work that you do in our community. And Milwaukee is just so, so lucky to have you and your family here. Thank you. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I'm lucky enough to have her as our neighborhood, our NDH here. So, yeah, nah, nah, nah. 
Uh, <laughs> I just, you know, I, I knew your name before I knew who you were. Um, and after meeting you, it was very clear that your name was synonymous with volunteerism, community leadership, and just a commitment to the people around you. And it's, um, it's just incredible to be able to have people like you in this community and leaders like you. And I just want to say you're so appreciated. And I know I don't make all the meetings just because I have a lot of scheduling conflicts, but you're doing a hell of a job. Thank you. And we appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Elizabeth, I was struck by your comments and in, in, in how you referred to as you found your hometown in Milwaukee. And I think hometown conjures up uh, a lot of thoughts in people's minds. It certainly does in mine. And I was looking for a hometown uh, and, you know, when I came to Milwaukee. And, and, and I just, I just want to thank you for all of the work you do in making Milwaukee not just a town for others, but their hometown. Well, yeah, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I will say uh, the, the Linwood block party last year was one of the best, uh, if probably the best, and I would be insulting some people out there, but <laughs> the best neighborhood sort of picnic that I've been to. It was really a great event, um, really fun. Um, and really a sense of community there, which was lovely to see. So um, thank you for your work there and everywhere else in the recycling world and in our equity steering committee and everywhere. It's, it's great to have somebody who's so dedicated to our town. Thank so you. We'll look forward to feting you more in the summer. Yeah. Am I forgetting anything, Jason? One, one thing, hold on. Next year, next time you do the black party, can we not? Can you not do it on the first day of college football? I got the same comment from my husband. <laughs> it's going to be on the first day of college football. So everyone else, mark your calendars, or we'll roll over a big screen for y'all. <laughs> okay. What day is that? Uh, it's the Saturday before Labor Day. Okay. And also the start of college football. <laughs> <laughs> For those that are counting. Good. I don't know, is there a Michigan fan in the house? I don't know. <laughs> the only thing I was going to mention is, um, would we like to get a photo? Oh, Maybe. right now? Should we? All of us? We probably should. We should. Yeah. Okay. We could do that. Like over... Yeah, usually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. So much. All right. So, let's try that. It's so nice to see you. It's everybody. I don't have to visit them all in my clinic, so. You gotta be better with them. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and she lays it properly. It's the award. Get a jacket or something, right? Jason? We may have to. If I'm going to take some, I'll take some. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is the Milwaukee Farmers Market 25th anniversary? So we've got three board members from the farmer's market here. I guess the chair is going to do the talking, but she has some moral support. <laughs> so this is Melanie Bennett, the chair of Celebrate Milwaukee, Inc., who is the nonprofit that operates the Milwaukee farmer's market. Yes. <laughs> All right, uh, good evening, Mayor Beatty, City Council. My name is Melanie Bennett. I am a resident of Milwaukee and also the board president of Celebrate Milwaukee, Inc., the parent organization of the Milwaukee Farmers Market. 
And I am very happy to be here tonight to hear your proclamation in support of the Milwaukee Farmers Market and our 25th season. Uh, we're very excited about this milestone and also for the opening of the market season on the first Sunday in May every year. It happens to be May 7th this year and we hope to see all of you there. Um, the market started back in 1999 with just seven vendors. Uh, it has grown a little bit since then. Uh, we have usually about 85 vendors per week and a total of 125 vendors over the course of the season. Um, it's been incredible to see these vendors and their small businesses grow. It's an honor to be part of their journey. It's also a pleasure to see our community come together at the market and join not only our vendors and their wonderful products, but enjoying each other, their neighbors, and all the benefits of, of community. We're also very proud at the market to offer food support programs to our neighbors, such as SNAP, WIC, and Double Up Food Bucks. Uh, we're very fortunate to, to be able to provide those with assistance from many partners. And speaking of partners, CMI also deeply appreciates the support we receive from the city, and that has helped the market grow into one of our community's strongest and best loved institutions. The city is a wonderful partner, and we're very grateful for that. So in closing, thank you for your support of our 25th season and thank you for your support year round, year after year of the Milwaukee Farmers Market and we will see you at the market. Great, thank you. Um, I'll read the uh, proclamation. I noticed we have a typo in the first line, but uh, thankfully we can uh, Fix that. That's considered a scrivener's error, so we can fix that before the record goes in. Um, I was on the board of the CMI when it was the 20th year, mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't seem like that was that that long ago. But no. here we are at 25. It's pretty exciting. So. Whereas the Milwaukee Farmers Market and Celebrate Milwaukee Inc. started in 1999 with just seven vendors, from those humble beginnings, the market now enters its 25th season with 85 vendors per week and over 125 vendors over the course of a season. And whereas, in addition to growing over these past 25 years, the Milwaukee Farmers Market has become a beloved institution in our city and a cornerstone of the Milwaukee community and beyond. Not only do the market and its vendors provide high quality food and products for local families, but the market provides a meeting place for everyone and helps to strengthen connections in our community from May through October. Whereas the Milwaukee Farmers Market is proud to offer a wide variety of local and unique products from a multitude of incredible vendors, over the past 25 seasons, the market has supported and nurtured numerous small businesses, helping local farmers, producers, and artisans start, develop, and grow their businesses in a supportive environment. The Milwaukee Farmers Market and CMI are also proud to support our neighbors with food supplement programs such as Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, Women, Infants, and Children Program, and Double Up Food Bucks. And whereas the Milwaukee, as the Milwaukee Farmers Market starts its 25th season, the city of Milwaukee is proud to have them as an important part of our community. And the city thanks everyone who supports the market, in particular, the wonderful vendors and customers. And the city encourages everyone to join us in visiting many times during this celebratory 25th season, starting on opening day on May 7th. Now, therefore, I, Lisa Beatty, mayor of the city of Milwaukee, a municipal corporation in the county of Clackamas in the state of Oregon, do hereby proclaim May 2023 to be the month-long celebration of the 25th anniversary of the Milwaukee Farmers Market. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have Natalie Rogers to give our Earth Day proclamation. As noted, this Saturday is Earth Day. It doesn't yeah. always fall on a Saturday. It's kind of nice no. when it does. And I looked at the weather and then I quickly closed it. <laughs> Too good to be true. I'm going to be there. It's going to rain. Um, every, every Oh, every event. 
Perfect. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Natalie Rogers. I'm the Climate and Natural Resources Manager. Um, I work in our Public Works Department under Peter Passarelli, and this is our Natural Resources team. Um, usually for proclamations, I show up with a, a speech, but today I was going through our photos from last Earth Day, and I was looking at the photos of such the, the great work that this team does. I figured it would be a great opportunity to showcase them. Um, this is Galen Hoshovsky, Courtney Wilson, and Stephen Zumwalt, our natural resources team. Um, they do amazing work in the city. Uh, they are behind Letting Library pulling out uh, yellow flag iris. They are up in our trees trimming them. They are in the hot summer heat pruning along uh, very busy roadways and planting trees in our uh, middle of our uh, islands and other public spaces. So they are doing amazing work for our community and our community is also doing amazing work for our green spaces. So this coming Saturday, April 22nd, is our Earth Day celebration. So Earth Day is actually the 53rd anniversary of Earth Day in the United States. And that started in 1970 as an environmental movement, essentially a protest for um, more protection over our green spaces and environment. Um, Earth Day, actually, part of that, that original Earth Day created um, some of the movement for our Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, and the Clean Water Act, which was kind of the first heavy environmental protection legislation. Um, that The reason I bring that up is actually because the Clean Water Act results in some of the stormwater and water quality protections that we as a local city are required to do, and that's a big part of what this team does. So Earth Day actually is kind of this amazing circle about how it started and then actually how it results in our day-to-day -day operations here as a city, which is really cool. Um, this team has been working hard, um, cleaning up green spaces, pulling invasives, making sure that they're safe for folks to access and recreate in. And one of said green spaces is actually our um, Pennywood Detention Pond, also known as the Willow Place Natural Area. Um, this is actually in South Milwaukee. You can see it's south of Lake Road. I um, called out where it is just because it can be kind of hidden. It's a little hidden gem, but it's, I'll show you some photos of it. It's really pretty. But in the context of, you know, the environment, which knows no city limits, no boundary lines, you can see here, it actually plays a really important role in kind of the green space road highway of our area. And Milwaukee is really fortunate to have this, to be bounded actually by two beautiful waterways that we are working to protect um, and restore. And so Willow Place Natural Area, uh, the water that goes in there, essentially that's a stormwater detention facility, meaning it collects all of the stormwater runoff and it is treated and retained within that site so that way it doesn't flood streets, but also that plants and other um, soils and, and minerals have the chance to pull out some of those pollutants that we see in an urban environment. It also provides critical habitat, but you know, being in an urban environment, it means that it's really prone to getting taken over by, by invasive species, which are just kind of either non-native or extremely weedy species that can quickly take over entire space, meaning, all of the other plants and wildlife that give kind of value to other species uh, can't compete. And so our natural resources team has been working hard to clear the space up. You can see here, this is um, photos that Galen, Galen is um, really, this is one of his pride and joys here in the city. Um, he calls it the gem of Milwaukee. Um, he loves this space because he's been working really hard on it and um, you can see even just by themselves, our natural resources team started working to clear some of these invasives, but it's a relatively large site and it's really hard to do by yourself. And so last year we actually had our first Earth Day celebration. Um, we advertised it to the local community. We put up, um, we actually went to, and we did it this year too, door hangers around town. And we of course provided donuts and coffee, which brings, I mean, I'll show up if there's free donuts and coffee, no matter what it is. Uh, we had a great turnout. Um, Mayor Beatty was there. Um, we actually have members from our Parks Foundation show up and be able to, to share a little bit of information. But what was actually really, really cool to see was it was neighbors, a lot of neighbors just meeting other neighbors. 
And so we had an amazing work party. Uh, we saw all types of folks, uh, all ages, all backgrounds, polling, ivy, doing what they can. We actually planted hundreds of shrubs and uh, native species that would provide food and provide habitat. Um, essentially, we're, we're helping restore the space to uh, a, essentially a quality where we can be proud and, and know that there's a, a verdant canopy and diverse amount of species living in this area. And I mean, so many folks turned up that we were, we were like excited. We did, it was raining of course, because me and I was expecting maybe a handful, but there's a lot of dedicated volunteers there. And so, um, you know, going back, you saw all of this ivy and um, clematis and even we saw a little bit of other hollies and invasives, but we got a lot of work done. Over 2,500 pounds of ivy and invasives were pulled out from the site just from that one event. And so this year we said, let's do it again. And so this Saturday at 9 a.m. we'll be at Pennywood Detention Pond or Willow Place Natural Area. It's off of Pennywood. Um, and we'll be there with donuts and coffee, um, even more donuts and coffee than last year. And we'll be there with, um, you know, hand equipment. We'll be there with gloves. So if anyone wants to join us for the day to come celebrate Earth Day, celebrate the foundation of Earth Day and what it means here in a local government and your community, come join us, we're gonna be there. Um, so there's information on our city website. If you just go to the calendar or you can use that link there. We are encouraging folks just because it's in a neighborhood, there's only on-street parking. Try your best to walk, bike, or carpool. Of course, if you need to drive, that's totally fine. Um, just be respectful of neighbors where you're parking. And then we have um, a head registration online if you'd like, or we'll have you know paper slips at um, Earth Day to sign up. And if you have questions, Galen's contact information is there. And um, you know I can't emphasize enough how amazing our natural resources team is here in the city, but then also how amazing our community has been in, in these events and other restoration events around town. Um, and Milwaukee's other residents, thank you. For, for the work that everyone's done both this year, last year, and the years before. Oh. Thank you. I love the salamanders. That's awesome. Um, and this was a really fun event last year. I really enjoyed it. Was, it's always uh, rewarding to see. I mean, not at all, not at every work party do they actually haul out the ivy, but there we were hauling it out and it was like, oh my God, that's oh. a lot of. It was my workout for the year. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of, it was, I mean, the nice part is there's planting. So if folks don't want to lift, there's that. And then there's even just the wheelbarrow pushing. That's why I put my husband on. Uh, I don't got the biceps for that, <laughs> but uh, it was, it was so much fun. Yeah. It was great, it was great. All right, so yeah, sign up online or show up and you don't have to sign up in advance. You can just show up. Um, so I'll read the proclamation. Whereas the people of this city, the Dogwood City of the West are proud to reside amid the natural beauty of the Pacific Northwest and the state of Oregon and all the trees, plants, waterways and wildlife encompassed in this region that give character and life to the landscape. And whereas the first Earth Day was proclaimed on April 22nd, 1970, and its annual observance has encouraged the conservation, protection, and appreciation of our planet's ecosystems and natural resources through environmental volunteerism and climate action. And whereas the Milwaukee community has embraced carbon and sustainability goals in the face of climate change, the most thre pressing threat for our planet, and whereas the city of Milwaukee has adopted a climate action plan, urban forest management plan, and comprehensive plan that includes strategies and policies that will enable our city to conserve natural resources, promote a healthy urban forest, encourage sustainable behaviors, and improve community environmental resiliency. And whereas the city of Milwaukee declared a climate emergency on January 21st, 2020, and called for the acceleration of the climate goals established in the Climate Action Plan to address the urgency of the climate crisis and call on community members to take part in climate action in their own homes, businesses, and communities. 
and whereas education, partnerships, and community actions for restoring and protecting our ecosystems, climate, and planet are promoted and honored by all Milwaukee residents, as is the shared desire for a resilient community, environmental justice, and access to nature for all community members. And whereas the city of Milwaukee proudly recognizes all who protect and preserve the environment and climate through participation in Earth Day activities by taking a proactive role in the protection of our community's precious natural resources. Now, therefore, I, Lisa Beatty, mayor of the city of Milwaukee, a municipal corporation in the county of Clackamas in the state of Oregon, do hereby proclaim April 22nd, 2023 to be Earth Day. Thank you, Natalie. <laughs> and finally, our last proclamation for today is National Library Week proclamation uh, featuring our director, library director, Brent Husher. I do love that the library director is named Husher. <laughs> First time I've heard that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stay on script. Keep us moving. I'm going to set my timer, so. He does this in meetings with me. That's true. <laughs> he does this all uh, Good evening, Mayor Beatty, counselors, colleagues, uh, members of our community. Um, as I was just introduced, I'm Brent Tusher, library director for the city of Milwaukee's Letting Library. And we're here to celebrate National Library Week, which is next week, April 23rd through 29th. Remember, there's more to the story when we're talking about our library. Most of us understand libraries are full of stories uh, in many formats, from picture books to large print, audiobooks, and more. But there's so much more to that story, there's a theme here. Uh, did you know uh, you can get free access to museums like Pittock Mansion, the End of Trail Interpretive Center, the Crystal Springs Rhododendron Garden, excuse me, and others. Or, I know this is popular too, the Library of Things. You can stop by, games, puzzles. If you need a pressure washer, if you want to try that Instant Pot, we've got it. There's more to that story. Library programming brings communities together for entertainment, education. As I lose my place in my script, connection through story times, movie nights, classes and lectures. I've seen all of you uh, at our library. It's appreciate it. Beyond the programming, it's that library infrastructure that advances our communities. We provide meeting spaces, internet, technology, access, literacy skills, and support for our businesses, job seekers, and entrepreneurs. In short, there's more to the library story. I invite you to stop by and explore for yourself. And if you're really in a celebratory uh, mood, uh, Monday, April 24th is the Right to Read Day, a national day to celebrate that fundamental freedom. Uh, and Tuesday, April 25th is National Library Workers Day, a day for everyone to recognize that valuable uh, contributions that our library workers are making. Thank you. Thank you. And here's 40 seconds back. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, is movie night back? Uh, there's going to be a series this summer, I'm told. Okay. There used to be a movie night before the new library was built when we had the pond house. And I used to go to that. That was, they showed some good movies there. And the teens have been showing some movies during their program. Oh, have they? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, all right. Whereas libraries provide the opportunity for everyone to pursue their passions and engage in lifelong learning, allowing them to live their best life. And whereas libraries have long served as trusted institution for all members of the community, regardless of race, ethnicity, creed, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, or socioeconomic status. And whereas libraries strive to develop and maintain programs and collections that are as diverse as the populations they serve and ensure equity of access for all. And whereas libraries adapt to the ever-changing needs of their communities, continually expanding their collections, services, and partnerships. 
And whereas libraries play a critical role in the economic vitality of communities by providing internet and techno technology access, literacy skills and support for job seekers, small businesses and entrepreneurs. And whereas libraries are accessible and inclusive places that promote a sense of local connection, advance understanding, civic engagement and shared community goals. And whereas libraries are cornerstones of democracy, promoting the free exchange of information and ideas for all. And whereas libraries, librarians, and library workers are joining library supporters and advocates across the nation to celebrate National Library Week. And whereas the city of Milwaukee wishes to recognize National Library Week in recognition of the importance of libraries in our community and in appreciation of the staff who do so much to make the Letting Library a regional destination. Now, therefore, I, Lisa Beatty, mayor of the city of Milwaukee, a municipal corporation in the county of Clackamas in the state of Oregon, do hereby proclaim April 23rd to 29th, 2023 to be National Library Week in Milwaukee. And uh, I think, you know, Monday and Tuesday are both days to call out, as you did. Um, the freedom to read is uh, a freedom that we find people challenging um, in these days. Uh, and, um, you know, we have some important races going on for our school board uh, around that issue. So I, I like that there's a freedom to read day. I did not rec realize that. Um, and certainly thanking our staff on Tuesday is also a great thing because um, we have a lot of dedicated staff in our library who, who are there for the people to help find what they need, what they're looking for. So, so thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Okay, so next thing is community comments. This is the part of the agenda during which council will hear community member comments regarding city business. For those in person who wish to speak, please submit a yellow comment card found on the table just outside the door. If you are on Zoom, please use the raise hand reaction to alert staff that you wish to speak. And when instructed to begin, click the microphone option to unmute yourself. If you are phoning in through Zoom and would like to make a comment, dial star nine to raise your hand. You may also submit a comment via email to OCR at MilwaukeeOregon.gov. Uh, so I'm not seeing any yellow cards here. Do we have anyone online, Mr. Stoffer, who is wishing to speak? No one, no one on Zoom and no comments. Uh, council received the two pieces of correspondence before the meeting that will be included in the record. But in addition to those, nothing new or nothing in person. Okay. Thank you. We received one from Mr. Clark. And what was the second one? Uh, Bernie Stout was the other uh, one. Okay. That's correct. Okay. I wasn't sure if the city manager had. Oh, okay. Before, well, before we begin, we're not going to begin, but even though we're not going to begin, we would, since there's no comment, is there any follow-up from the April 4th community comments? I think Ober? The, the only one that we wanted to talk about briefly was that we had received um, some feedback a while back about private parking. Mm -hmm. um, and the mayor's asked that we put that on the retreat uh, or on the the council retreat in June, just as a discussion topic about what we want to do. Uh, but we have responded back to that individual and we've sent you all the update on what was shared with him. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. So if there's no one on Zoom, then I will not read the rest of that script and I will go on. Okay. Uh, so the consent agenda. Tonight's consent agenda includes minutes of the city council March 7, 2023 work session. March 7, 2023 regular session, March 14, 2023 study session, March 21, 2023 work session, March 21, 2023 regular session, and April 3rd, 2023 site visit. Approval of an Oregon Liquor and Cannabis Commission application for Wong's Garden, 10820 Southeast Oak Street, full on-premises sales. Approval of an Oregon Liquor and Cannabis 
Commission application for Wagon with the Dragon, 11301 Southeast 21st Avenue, limited off-premises sales, and a motion to adopt an audit report correction plan. Does any member of council wish to remove any item from the consent agenda? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion. I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. I second. It's been moved and seconded to, to approve the consent agenda as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Uh, passes unanimously, the consent agenda. Okay, so we will move on to uh, the public hearing on minor housekeeping code amendments and ordinance. Are we waiting for? Oh, she's online, okay, okay. Um, the public hearing on the proposed minor housekeeping code amendments file ZA 2023-001 is called to order. The purpose of this hearing is to hear the staff report, take public comment, deliberate, and consider adopting an ordinance making code changes. Does any member of council, does any council member wish to announce an actual or potential conflict of interest? Seeing none, uh, we can go forward with the staff report from senior planner Vera Colius. Good evening, Mayor, members of council. Hoping everyone can hear me okay. Um, I'm here to, uh, Vera Coley, Senior Planner, here to present the code amendment package for uh, housekeeping amendments. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. And great. All right. Um, this is the public hearing. This is a continuation from our um, work session. Um, that we had back in March. Vera, we can see your the, the view of the, we can see your next slide, the preview side. Oh, I see, sorry, hold on. Did that, nope. Yep, there you go, that it. works. There you go. Oh, it did? Oh, great, yep. okay, good, thank you. All right, um, so a little bit of background about this project. So um, this is a package of what we call housekeeping amendments, um, which are minor code fixes. Generally, they are clarifications or minor changes. They're not intended to affect the meaning or intent of existing regulations, um, and they are not intended to be a change in policy in the code. Um, just a quick recap on our process. Uh, the staff was with the Planning Commission and held a public hearing on February 14th where the Planning Commission recommended approval of the package of amendments. Uh, we were here with the City Council on March 7th for a work session um, where we discussed the amendments and received some feedback and some direction from the Council. And tonight we're here for the public hearing. Uh, I did want to point out that we did, um, as we usually do, um, provided notification to the NDAs um, about the code amendment package and we posted a full code commentary with the 30-day notice as well. Okay, let's get into these amendments. All right, so um, the first um, one of the proposed amendments is that we are proposing to change the zoning map so that we are renaming the high-density residential zone from HDR to RHD. Um, that makes it um, consistent with the RMD or the moderate density residential zone. So we are proposing to change that. So we have a consistent nomenclature uh, for those two zones. Uh, we are making proposing a couple of changes in Title 17 in the Land Division Code um, to revise um, the language um, for the authorized staff for setting bonds um, to be the city manager or designees um, rather than um, naming specific staff members like the public works director or the city engineer. Um, when titles change, that means we have to change code. So um, we're trying to get into the practice of, um, of having language that is consistent with city manager or designee and that keeps it clear uh, throughout the code. All right. Uh, we are proposing to make a few changes to some of the definitions. Um, we are proposing to revise the definition of family child care home to be consistent with state law. Um, that's via um, House Bill 3109. Um, we are proposing to revise the definition of major pruning um, in the zoning code so that it matches the definition in the tree code um, in 16.32. Uh, we are asking to revise the definition of structure 
um, that clarifies that storage containers and sheds and carports are also considered structures. That's how we um, have been um, interpreting the code, but we want to make it clear in the definitions as well. And what that does is it allows us to clearly define um, and apply setbacks, minimum setbacks uh, to those structures. And finally, we were proposing to amend the definition for prime or delete the definition of primary entrance um, because we also, the code also already includes a primary building entrance um, inclusion. So we're trying to clarify that. <clears throat> and so we're proposing to remove primary entrance and just stick with um, primary building entrance. We are proposing to um, amend the lot coverage bonus sections um, in the high density and moderate density residential zones to allow for accessory structures to be part of the calculation for the bonus. Um, currently, um, it is not permitted. It's only for um, additions um, or for structures that are less than um, two stories um, that they are allowed a bonus of lot coverage. Um, but what we have experienced um, over the last several years are folks that um, the house itself is under um, uh, would meet the meet the bonus piece of it, but they can't add a shed or something like that um, to their to their property. And so, what we're trying to do is to um, account for folks that would like to add a shed or something like that to their property and allow them to um, access that um, that lot coverage bonus um, as part of the property. Um, we're, so again, we're asking that folks be allowed to use the 10 percentage point lot coverage increase, even for building an accessory structure, that it's not just for major um, additions um, to, to the primary home. Okay. Um, I've, I've struck out the, um, this was the slide that um, we discussed at the at the work session. I just wanted to note, and this is in the staff report as well, um, we did talk about a code amendment um, within the NMIA zone that um, related to fulfillment centers. We had a lot of discussion um, at the work session. And so what uh, staff is proposing is to not pursue that code amendment um, in so that we can have larger uh, larger discussion about uh, fulfillment centers um, in the NMIA. Oh, but I should not have struck out the revise the key streets graphic to match the text. We do still want to do that, um, but we are not pursuing the fulfillment center code amendment as part of this package. Um, we would like to clarify the list of exemptions um, within the Willamette Greenway um, section of the code to comply with um, exempted activities that are identified in goal 15. Um, we've got a couple of, addition, of, of revisions proposed in the accessory structures section of the code. Um, we would like to add the, um, that a retaining wall is exempt um, from the setbacks section. It's not, in, it's not to be considered an accessory structure, so would not be subject to the minimum setbacks. And then there's a um, labeling issue within one of the tables that we would like to add the street side yard um, minimum setback to the table itself. It's not there now. You have to read words instead of look at a table and it makes it confusing for folks to use the code. Um, this one section of the code that if folks were looking at it might look like we did a whole ton of things um, are the, um, the building design standards in 19.505. Um, it looks like a lot of changes, but we're, it's really just a, a reorganization of that section um, so that we have all of the design standards that are related to one to four units in their own section, all of the standards that relate to cottage clusters in their own section, and finally, um, all of the standards that relate to townhouses. When we did the middle housing code, we tried to have a table and try to have things kind of combined. And it ended up meaning that folks needed to flip back and forth between a couple of different sections of code, which doesn't work that that well. So we would like to um, clean all of that up. Um, there isn't any new language um, proposed in the section, but for a section that um, uh, denotes some state law compliance language uh, related to conversions of single detached homes into middle housing. Um, so we've included that language so that we are consistent with, um, with state law. And final slide, um, we have some amendments proposed related to type three review and measure 56 notices. And that measure 56 notices are not required for owner initiated map amendments. Um, some language that relates to appeals um, and includes um, a process for um, 
putting together a notice of decision um, and sending that out. And then finally, um, a, um, a notation about annexations not being subject to the 120 day rule for land use applications. And with that, um, I, is, I think we're at, oh, and then finally the staff, recommend, staff recommendation um, is that council approve the package of code amendments um, consistent with the planning commission recommendation as well. And I will stop the sharing for now and see if anyone has any questions. Questions? No questions? Oh, I have questions. <laughs> Nobody else has questions. I have a few. Um, first off, and I had flagged this for the city manager, but um, we decided to drop the uh, NMIA fulfillment centers, but it's still in the findings. Oh, i sorry. I didn't realize that. I can, I it can make those changes. It is at, um, I'm pretty sure. Let me find my email. I can give it to you. Okay, 38 and 39. Yeah, it's at the top and, you know, the bottom of one page and the top of another. Okay. So the findings need an edit to take that out. Um, my question was about off-street parking. Um, there's a, and that was, you know, it, within those uh, reorganization of the design standards. So there's a, there's a big passage of off-street parking that discusses what happens in cottage clusters, and that's you know moved over to cottage clusters. But there's nothing in, or else I've missed it, in the one to four homes or the townhomes on parking. Is that correct? And correct. was that intentional? There never was, a, there never were any design standards related to um, okay. off-street parking for um, for anything other than the cottage clusters. So, so the yeah. the requirement, so there's no design standards for that, Correct. but there are still off-street parking requirements depending on whether it's one versus multiple units and whether it's on arterials or not. And I mean, there are places where off-street parking is required and places where it's not required. And we aren't changing anything about that. The only changes to off-street parking would be whatever the Climate Friendly and Equitable Communities Act um, would be requiring. So we're subject to that part of the state law, but the zoning code does not have any changes related to zone. Well, this to package, off yeah, I realized that. Correct. Other sorry, package. sorry, sorry. Yes, correct. No, there are no changes to off-street parking as part of this package. No. Package, okay. No. no. Yeah, we have another. Yeah, we have another package coming for sure. But yes. Okay. Um, okay. I think that was it for my questions. No one else. Uh, just a quick comment. I just wanted to say thank you. This is a lot of work and you got a lot of feedback from us the last time you came to um, council. And so I just wanna appreciate all the time and thoughtfulness that went into revising this and, um, and the whole process overall. So thank you. No problem. Thank you for the great feedback. That's what work sessions are for. <laughs> yeah, I think work sessions always pay off. It's always a good idea. Um, okay, well. If nobody else has any uh, comments or questions, um, have we received any additional correspondence on this topic? Not that I'm aware of. Fair, are you aware of any correspondence? No. No. Okay. Does anyone wish to comment on the proposed housekeeping amendments? So before I read this script, I will see if there's, there's no one in the room to comment and I don't assume. Um, no one on Zoom. No one on Zoom. Okay, so I won't bother reading the rest of that script. Uh, and then the question about staff having any response to the testimony does not apply. Council questions for staff, we just did, so that we don't need to do that again. Um, if there are no more questions, I will entertain a motion to close the public comment part of the hearing. A motion. I move to close the public comment part of the minor housekeeping code amendments hearing. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close the public comment part of the minor housekeeping code amendments hearing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. None heard. The public comment part of the minor housekeeping code amendments hearing is closed. Is there any council discussion? 
not too much to discuss, no questions. So is the council ready to vote? I move up for the first and second readings by title only and adoption of the ordinance amending municipal code title 14 signs title 17 land division title 19 zoning and the zoning map to make minor changes to select sections for the purpose of clarification and improved effectiveness file number ZA-2023-001. Second. And do we need to say with the amendment to the findings as noted? Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you say that? With the amendments to the, to the findings. Uh, as noted. As noted, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> So it's been moved and seconded for the first and second readings by title only and adoption of the ordinance amending municipal code title 14 signs, title 17 land division, title 19 zoning, and the zoning map to make minor changes to select sections for the purpose of clarification and improved effectiveness, file number ZA-2023-001 with the amendment to the findings as noted. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. None heard. It passes unanimously. Uh, Ms. Ober, would you please read the ordinance two times by title only? An ordinance of the City of Milwaukee, Oregon, amending municipal code, Title 14 signs, Title 17 land division, Title 19 zoning, and the zoning map to make minor changes. To select sections for the purpose of clarification and improved effectiveness, file number ZA. 2023-001 as amended. And an ordinance of the City of Milwaukee, Oregon, amending municipal code Title 14 signs, Title 17 land division, Title 19 zoning, and the zoning map to make minor changes to select sections for the purpose of clarification and approved effectiveness. File number ZA 2023-001 as amended. Mr. Stauffer, would you please poll the council? Councilor Stavenger. Aye. Councilor Kazra Buddy? Aye. Councilor Massey? Aye. Council President Nicodemus? Aye. Mayor Beatty? Aye. Motion carried five to zero, ordinance 2229. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Is there an appeal thing I have to read? No. Okay. Okay. That's it for that then. Thank you, Vera. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Uh, so now we're ready to talk about council goals. Look at us. We're 45 minutes, 40 minutes ahead of. That's amazing. <laughs> Don't jinx us. Jinx. No jinx. No jinx. <laughs> uh, okay. Council goals. So, I mean, we have, I think, two things. One is discussing the goals and one is discussing the resolution because we haven't really ever had any uh, wordsmithing on the resolution, I don't think. But um, let's start with the substantive goals. Uh, as proposed for those watching out there, the council goals would be to continue our work, to continue the three goals that the last council ended with last year, which are uh, climate action, equity and social justice, and um, parks. Uh, council discussed this at our retreat in January and a few times since. And uh, so that's the proposal on the table. Uh, does anybody want to discuss that or have views they want to express? Uh, I just, well, I, I want to put it out there. I think we're, we're all for equity, justice, and inclusion. So I, I don't know if we really need to have a, a discussion about that. Well, and I say that because I don't know if anybody saw the OPB article today that what the city of Portland has done, where they offer, you know, they were going to fund uh, reimagine Oregon, and they were going to give that, get, and, and it's to help um, provide entrepreneurship for black folks in the city of Portland. 
and three of the city councilors voted to take that money away. And all it does now is build that distrust again with the city. And I think we need to look at like what they did and not do that. They, 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 there was this racial reckoning, rec racial reckoning, right? That happened in 2020. They pledged this money three years later. They put barriers in front of, of these folks to get this money. Then they come out and say, you haven't used it. Now we're going to take it back. And I think we could use that as an example of what not to do to gain trust from our folks in our community. So that's my one thing. And I. So you're so we can talk about them, you know, each separately. Yeah. So we can say, is anybody uh, proposing removing the equity, justice, and inclusion? I have not heard any uh, views to that effect in prior conversations, but just to confirm, nobody is suggesting that. No. Everybody's good for That's keeping that on as a goal. Okay. Then shall we move on to um, climate? Uh, same question. Uh, we have a lot of uh, climate work on uh, completed. We have a very ambitious climate action plan. We will hopefully soon be sort of discussing the check-in report that we got from Natalie a few weeks ago. Um, but anyway, is at this point, is anyone suggesting that we take climate off the council goals? Nope. No. Okay. So it sounds like we have two down, one to go. Parks. The parks goal is, um, is uh, as the community knows, we've talked about uh, potentially leaving the North Clackamas Parks District. Whether we are going to ultimately decide to do that is still undetermined, and we are probably f at least a few months away from a, a determination on that. But uh, either way, there's a lot of work to be done around parks. Uh, because if we stay, we have a lot of things to negotiate, uh, to cover our new parks, to figure out what's going to happen with Milwaukee Bay Park, et cetera. So either way, parks is a, uh, a lot of staff time and, and uh, not an insubstantial amount of, of money to move those discussions forward. So personally, I'm for keeping parks as our third goal, um, but we have had discussion of other potential third goals. I'm for keeping parks as a goal. Yeah, I'm uh, for uh, keeping parks as a goal, and I think that the resolution is, you know, worded in a, in a, you know, that gives us the maximum flexibility over the next uh, few months to determine the best road to take. And so, um, you know, I don't want to get hung up in, you know, those various uh, turns and twists and paths. I just want to keep it open so that we can continue to work. And, uh, you know, I think that, the, you know, eventually the, the best solution in the city will present itself and we will choose that path. Mm -hmm. um, just to reiterate on, on climate, um, I'm, I'm for keeping that as a goal. It, it would be good to once we get the review to have a more, maybe take a more targeted approach on what specifically we want to accomplish uh, with this as a goal and actually have a benchmark. Uh, for, I know we have the net zero by 2040, but <clears throat> I think we need to be more targeted on the specific actions uh, that we're looking to take. I am going to give you an update on all of this as soon as you all are done and told me which direction we're gonna go, but I think that's excellent and it's, it's what we're planning to do. And as far as parks, I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to beat a beat a dead horse here. Everybody's heard my, my spiel. And I, I just want to clarify, like, I'm not against parks. I'm not against us having, you know, or whatever it is that we're looking to do with parks. I know it's kind of messy right now. There's a lot to clarify. Um, that's not the stance I'm taking. It, it, it's more about the timing, similar to what the citizens have discussed about the levy for the fire department, timing and cost. That's the only... Um, 
thing there. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not gonna bore you guys with my spiel as I've done in the past. Um, I am also in favor of keeping parks as a council goal. Um, I think that we have some unfinished business to resolve here and, and we won't actually be able to do that for several months um, at best. But I also just wanna say thank you for continuing to um, express your concerns. And I know that um, affordability is something that is um, a value that we all hold and we all do work in different ways. And um, and I, I'm just really looking forward to being able to partner on some of those things to ramp up um, that work even outside of being a goal. So thank you. And I, if I can just reiterate, for, for everything that I've said, I, I hope nobody up on the dais is thinking that I'm not, I don't think that you guys consider, that you all consider affordability as important. I, I, I'm not, that's not what my soapboxes are about. Um, but we, we, we don't necessarily work for each other, we work for the people. So that my, my, my rants and my discussions are more about um, for the citizens who put us in these positions, really. Uh, so I, I don't mean any of that to say that the other counselors on this dais don't care, because I know very well, I've had conversations with a lot of people even before I even got here, so I, I have a good idea of where everybody stands. Um, it's just for me, it happens to be on the forefront and a priority. So I appreciate everybody's time too. And listen to me blab, <laughs> I digress. <laughs> okay. So it sounds like we have a, um, at least a 4-1 vote on the goals. Um, do we need to talk about the, the text itself or are people okay with the text? I'm okay with, okay with uh, it. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, with that, then I guess uh, I would entertain a motion. I move to approve the resolution adopting council goals for 2023 and 2024. I second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the resolution adopting council goals for 2023 and 2024. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. No. Uh, so the goals pass by a vote of four to one. Can I take a minute? Yeah. Uh, so I'm, um, I really appreciate the direction and clarity for staff and um, some things that you can expect. So uh, the way this has worked historically is that when you all set a goal, we have staff dedicated it and we put money into the next budget cycle in order to try and accomplish that work. Uh, because these are carryovers, some of that budget already exists and some of those staff already exists. So those staff will be coming forward. That's mainly Natalie for the climate goal to talk about uh, the climate action plan, to talk about the work that she's been working on and to give you all a chance to help redirect her towards other things within the climate action plan that are important to you, to make sure we're actually aligning with what you all wanna get out of that work. Um, all of it's important we have to prioritize that work too. So this is a chance for you to weigh in and to talk about what you think is the most important parts for Milwaukee. Uh, the the um, equity, position is currently vacant. We're going to actually post that job tomorrow uh, based on this vote. So we will work on getting that position filled. The equity plan is due to you all in August. So I will get a draft probably in July for review. Um, I may share that. I probably will share that with you all, but we won't have a discussion on council until August uh, because travel during the summer is always interrupts meetings. So we're just trying to make sure that everyone can be here for the discussion about what you want to prioritize out of that plan. Um, and then parks is, it's never really slowed down. We're uh, going full steam ahead and you all know that works. So for right now, that's my plan. I'm going to try and move the climate action plan up. Uh, but if, again, if there's travel plans during the summer that will negate that move, that's why it's staying in August, but we'll see if there's a way to do it sooner. Climate staying in August? Uh, no. Uh, You're talking about equity. No, I'm actually talking about climate because I, I, I'm not sure when y'all are going to be around. So ideally right now we have it for 90 minutes. I think the first meeting in August. 
I'd actually like to try and move it up, but I need to make sure it doesn't fall in July. So we're going to see if we can move some things around in June in order to, to facilitate that. But I need to talk to staff to see if we can move things. Um, I think those are the big pieces that I need to say out loud. Is there anything else that you all need me to hear about the goals or about the work? Just a quick question. Sure. Um, we had talked about including a cover letter or an accompanying letter. Do we still want to do that? Is that still something that we would put in the pilot, something that we would talk about as a part of. So we would we had talked about doing an article and that cover letter into the pilot. So it's up to you all, but we can put that in on the I think you had talked about wanting to do like the goals on the first page. And then when you flip to the next page, it explains kind of the other things that we considered and looked at. Is that still the plan or is there a different plan? I, I think it would be valuable to put the put to, to put the context about how we <clears throat> arrived at this decision because it was a uh, you know, it was a decision uh, that was not taken lightly. I mean, it's not like what were the goals last year? rubber stamp it, these are the same goals. I mean, I, I would be concerned that that might be a perception. And I just want to, you know, want some context around that, about the discussion, you know, the, you know, the entire discussion. And, you know, and the, maybe the, you know, maybe even, uh, you know, the, the, the points of contention in the discussion. I'm, 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 I'm for full transparency, you know. Um, we currently, our next meeting is on May 2nd. We could bring drafts or you all could bring drafts and review them together. And then we would put it in the deadline for the May for the June 1st publication of the pilot is May 13th. So that would give us enough time if that's of interest to you all. So I just want to um, remind folks, I sent a draft on March 21st. Oh. Um, and so that should be in your email boxes. Um, edits can go to... Scott, if you want to work off of that or if you want to scrap that and move into something entirely new, I am not wedded to it. I just committed to write a draft. Well, my apologies. I somehow missed that draft. So I will definitely, uh, yeah, I will definitely take a look. And we can bring that on um, the second with like the legislative update yep. piece to finalize. And then once that's confirmed by council, we'll put that on top with the resolution or with the resolution in the record. If you wanted, you could go faster, but I don't have a, we're past the deadline for publication for this next month. So right. no matter what, it's June 1. Okay, great. Great. Um, okay. Uh, anything else on goals? Okay, then I think the last thing we have is just to finish our uh, council reports. Mm -hmm. And Councilor okay. Stavenjord has uh, quite a list of committees she's assigned to, so. The lightning round. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> the only thing standing between you and your homes. Um, all right, so the C4 committee of Clackamas County, that's the one that handles land use, transportation, um, some discussion of homelessness. Um, they met on the 6th and went through um, STIP, which stands for Statewide Transportation uh, Improvement Program uh, Projects. So there were two areas I can... You can find the whole report online if you would like to read through it. There were two areas that pertained to Milwaukee. One is in their fix-it funds, which could be applicable to culverts, which could then connect to the Kellogg Dam project. So um, I reached out to ODOT and we have a follow-up conversation to see what that looks like and if it's applicable, then we'll get um, Tessie involved. And um, the second one is a proposed project um, that is in their report. It's on um, 224 between 17th and Rusk Road. So it runs through um, our community pretty extensively. Um, I've asked for more details on that specific project when it was proposed to start, timeline, et cetera. And so that'll be part of our follow-up meeting too. Um, 
the C4 Metro Committee uh, that meets tomorrow, so I don't have an update there. Before you move on from that, the repaving project of 224, I also noticed something, I don't know if other people have noticed it, but at, um, at Oak Street, there are lights hanging like there might be creating turn lanes dedicated left turn lanes, which was something that, I mean, we've never been told that, but it's, that's certainly what it looks like because there's one for each direction. Um, that was something the community really clamored for back when I was on planning commission and that Walgreens complex was put in. So um, that's exciting if it's gonna happen. Well, I uh, just as a tangent to all of this, we have invited ODOT to come to our next meeting. They're gonna be here for 30 minutes and they're coming to talk about um, the crossings, the sidewalk crossing closures, so that you all have a chance to feed, give feedback on that before that happens. But this is another great topic. If you want, I can ask Steve to be prepared to answer that on the dais. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. That'd be great. And um, yeah, and the questions that Councilor Stavanger was mentioning about just timeline and yeah. Um, the only other thing about C4 is that they have their retreat coming up in early June and they will be talking about um, land use, about tolling, um, everything across the board and it's open to everyone. And I so, signed up. Oh, did yay. You? <laughs> it's not. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's never too late. Um, we can get you that information. Yeah. It's out Trend at the point. mountain. It's out at one of yeah. those nice resorts on the way up Mount Hood. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. out at Welch's. So, um, and if you stay the night, you can do a more expensive uh, sign up or you can just go for the day. I'm just going for the day. Yeah, meetings and then it's close to enough to just, just drive out there. Mm -hmm. um, but if anyone else is interested in attending, that would be really helpful because on the second day of the retreat, I have a conflict for part of the day. And so that's, it would be really nice to have some backup there. Um, I will look up, I think it's June, oh. it's the first part of June. I'll, I'll find it for you. Um, the, for those of you that are interested, the Metro Policy Advisory Committee um, meets next week and we're digging into um, some of the 2040 um, planning efforts. And so um, that might be a meeting to tune into. I'm the alternate to that group, but Clackamas County um, has the rep and the alternate attending double the fun. So, um, so if you want to also listen, um, the homeless services um, continuum of Clackamas County, the, this is a really great um, group of providers that get together and share updates around what's happening with the homeless services continuum. And at their last meeting, they shared about a navigation center that is being um, constructed in Oregon City. So I wasn't sure if folks had heard about this or not. It's in the Two Rivers neighborhood of Oregon City. So kind of um, if you know where my father's house is and you go um, up the hill a bit from there, it's, um, it's located there where the... Um, there's like a medical campus. So it, that is not a shelter, um, although in emergencies or inclement weather, emergency beds would be provided, but this is the, the co-location of services um, so that folks can provide you know, navigation and housing um, triage and, and things along those lines. It would also allow um, my father's, or the father, father's heart and loved one to be, um, tenants at that site. So it's really incredible expansion and coordination of services. So that was a really exciting announcement. Um, I, d I promised the council that at the housing advisory board meeting, I would bring up the Bertman house. We discussed at our last, last, last meeting. Um, and so I shared that information with Clackamas County. They've not been breaking down my door in response. <laughs> so I, all I can just say is that the information is with them. Um, and I will let anyone know, I'll let you know if I get a follow up on that. Um, and then lastly, um, there, so last night was the, my first meeting of the Public Health Advisory Committee for Clackamas County, and um, they're making available secure storage items 
Um, this is uh, around reducing risk in communities, and it's also around a bit of their suicide prevention work. So um, I can provide these flyers to Scott, maybe. Um, and so if you sign up, you have to fill out a form um, and arrange for pickup in Oregon City, but they're giving away rifle cases, cable gun locks, pistol key vaults, and medication lock boxes. Um, there's a limit to the number of those items that you can request, but I think that that's a really great resource to share out in the community and for, you know, for within our networks. Um, so I think that's it. Did I make it? I didn't set a timer, but <laughs> I can see you watching me, Brent. So. <laughs> that's, those are all of my updates for now. Thank you. Great. Yeah, I'm very much interested in seeing those flyers and getting help, trying to help get that word out. That information is in, oh, I lied. There's, it's in Ukrainian, um, Chinese, simplified Chinese, um, Russian, Spanish, and Vietnamese. So as we share it out um, through those communities, if we can do some focused outreach, that would be really great. Awesome. Great. All right. Anything else for the good of the order? Pardon? <laughs> well, she's got a. Oh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I move to adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Hearing none, we are adjourned. What a celebratory <laughs> nose blow. <laughs>